Hello, caregivers. Uh, we are starting with module two and unit one for LGLD care program that is daily care routine performing schedule activities in entire day before noon. I am Neha Sabarwal from Sangam University. So let's start. So in today's module, we are going to study two points that is theory learning outcomes and practical learning outcomes. Uh, in theory learning outcomes, we are going to discuss the ways the elderly person for assisting with their day-to-day -day activities and understanding the activity of daily living that is ADLs. Discussing how to assist in various ADLs of an elderly person such as toileting, bathing, dressing, eating etc which should be done before noon. And in practical learning outcomes there are demonstrate the appropriate ways of assessing an elderly person with their personal demonstration of the method of feeding, serving food and monitoring them and explaining the process of sweeping, dusting, mopping of the house, all these activities. So let's begin. So uh, for, for the big with building trust with elderly individuals. Uh, building trust with elderly individuals require a lot of patience a lot of listening skills so we are going through all the aspects of that that all that is required for building trust with a person to, uh, for whom we are giving care or elderly person is our responsibility so first of all active listening uh, it is very important to take time to understand what their needs are what their concerns are and what are their preferences it is very important to understand their needs and acting accordingly and that can only be accomplished with active listening next is respect boundaries uh, we have to be very mount mindful of their personal space and boundaries uh, always asking before offering assistance is a basic rule. Sometimes elderly people do not want assistance. They want to be uh, individually performing their task, but at certain times they require assistance. So it is always important to ask before offering any kind of assistance. Uh, next is empathy and compassion. Showing empathy and compassion is always a very important thing uh, empathy and support without any condescending we should offer them some uh, some help we should offer them support and show that we are understanding what they are feeling what they are going through is really really important next is consistency and reliability uh, be dependable it is very very important that they should have trust that you are dependable wherever they require help you will be there and the consistency in your assistance is absolutely important it's very important because that help has no sense which is not offered when it is actually required right so next is patience uh, some activities might take longer for them so be patient and avoid rushing right uh, some activities are which are little longer which they can perform little slower than the usual adult person so it requires a lot of patience and avoid any kind of rushing that uh, which can make them anxious or they uh, they might not be very comfortable with that attitude right next is adaptability Aging comes with fluctuation. Every person ages very differently and every person's life cycle or the age cycle is also very different. So being adaptable to fluctuations of their behavior, their mood, their requirement is very crucial. So adaptability is one of the important aspects. Let's, let's move forward. Uh, it is also again very important aspect to respect their independence and along with that respecting their independence it is very important to encourage independence wherever possible and offer help accordingly for the tasks that they can do by their own they don't require assistance or you want them to do it uh, by their own so in, encourage independence wherever possible wherever required and only offer assistance when it's required right next is clear communication 
communicate very clearly and openly by using simple language because communication is the key the more clear communication will be or the language used will be simpler it is easy to build relation or rapport with the person right so clear communication is the key for building trust with elderly individuals establishing rapport uh, building rapport building a connection cannot be possible without having some common interest or having some common hobbies right so share stories with them share your interests with them listen what they have to share they might have a lot of stories because they have experience of the entire lifetime right so listen those listen to those stories uh, share your hobbies with them it will really help you connect with them it, it it is a very easy way to connect with any elderly person and for that matter any person any human being okay uh next is demonstrate competence uh show that you are skilled and knowledgeable in the assistance you provide because that gives them a confidence that yes whenever need comes you are there and you have the knowledge to assist them for a particular problem so that is also required uh follow through uh it is uh, one of the important aspect if you promise something make sure to follow through if you have committed them something that you will do that for them make sure that you do or inform them that about it that is very important that is very important for building trust okay next is safety and comfort uh safety and comfort includes providing them a safe environment and proper equipment for assistance so that the 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 care you would like to give them will be easier will be safer and the entire environment around them is also safe for them okay let's move to understanding activities of daily living activities of daily living uh these are the tasks or uh, these are the activities that individual typically performs independently and to take care of themselves and manage their daily lives these are the activities that are required for maintaining hygiene and managing our daily lives so basic activities of daily living that is bads uh, let's start with them first first come personal hygiene personal hygiene includes bathing or showering or uh, oral care or hair care or grooming them on the daily basis it is very important uh, there are majority of uh, elderly people those who can do these activities by th their own but still they need some kind of assistance right they can take bath by their own they can shower by themselves but still they require care still they require help right similarly next come dressing selecting appropriate clothing for them uh, putting it on and taking off garments and fastening buttons or zippers uh, maybe they can dress themselves but fastening of buttons and zippers may be difficult for them so it is uh, it is of great importance that you choose appropriate clothing for them according to the weather or season maybe or putting uh, like putting off the garment helping them in putting off the garment or taking off the garment it can give them a very uh, it can give them a very helpful hand next is eating uh, ability to use utensils chew swallow food without assistance they can do that by their own but uh, putting putting out uh, right utensils for them helping them hold some utensils if they are unable to hold it they can chew food by themselves they can swallow it but being there with them is of great importance next is mobility uh, walking standing up sitting down and getting in and getting out of the bed or chairs maybe may require certain kind of help there are very, um, so many elderly people those who are unable to walk by themselves they require some kind of help they might use a stick but still they need your hand just to navigate you just to help you help them right uh, standing up may required some effort or help 
and similarly sitting down and uh, it is for some people it is also very difficult from getting out of the bed or getting into the in the bed or maybe sitting and getting up of up the chair it is difficult for them and if you are there for assisting them it will be very helpful for them next is continence management uh, control bowel movement and bladder functions or manage incontinences it is one of the biggest problem as we grow older as we age uh, bowel and bladder movements become weaker so it is very important to take care of that and if uh, any incontinence happens so managing them that at the same time is also of utmost importance right next is toileting uh, using the toilet or managing personal hygiene related to the toileting activities is also very important sometimes because of the age they are unable to do it for themselves or because it's sometimes because of the age they are reluctant to do, do that so just uh, manage managing that or just helping them with that can be of great importance let's move further uh, instrumental activities of daily living these are the activities which are uh, required apart from the basic necessity or basic routine uh, first comes meal preparation uh, preparing meal includes planning what to cook preparing that according to their health condition what they can eat and what not and cooking meals independently it's uh, most uh, many couples or many elderly people can cook meals for themselves but some of them cannot so you can help them you can assist them or even if they are, they are able to do it by their own standing by them can be of great help to them next is housekeeping uh, housekeeping includes cleaning uh, laundry maintaining a safe living environment uh, it is of a high importance uh, they are unable to do cleaning for themselves they are unable to do laundry for themselves so just assisting them in managing all those things can make their life very easy uh, managing finances uh, when they were younger, they were very much able to manage their own finances. But as they age, uh, managing personal finances, uh, paying bill, keeping track of the technology and managing accordingly, managing budgets and understanding financial matters becomes, uh, becomes very difficult for them. So it is very important being a, a elderly people caregiver. It is important to handle those things and keeping it in communication uh, with them that you are doing this financially right this is how you are managing their bills this is how you are preparing their budgets so it is very important that you communicate everything and help them at, at the same time uh, medication management organizing and taking medication as prescribed uh, is very important understanding the dosage that uh, what medicine should be given at what time and in what quantity is very very important because this is the medication is something which can keep uh, their health on track or just detrack it so it is very important to make a schedule of it and help them in doing that they can take their medicines by their own but they have the tendency to forget it or maybe take the wrong quantity of it so assisting in in that can be a big help next is transportation arranging and using transportation to get to appointments uh, shopping maybe social activities maybe it is very very much required uh, they also need some time out they also need to visit doctor they also need to go out for shopping or just to meet some old friend right these activities require assistance as they want to go with you as they require transportation and they cannot drive themselves so it is of utmost importance that you help in that so next is assisting elderly individuals with ads before noon uh, elderly people require most assistant assistance in so many ways like morning wake ups uh, it is of very important it, this is a very important thing that you gently wake them up uh, at their agreed time 
at what time they want to get up from the bed and respecting their sleep needs. Of course, they require longer sleeping hours than an adult person or a, or a teenager or a person in his 30s or 40s maybe. And assisting them with transitioning from bed to seated position, it is very much required because many elderly people have health issues and they are unable to move themselves by their own. So it is required that at the right time we wake them up and help them from, for, from transitioning to bed or from to a seating position right next is personal hygiene uh, it is required as we discussed earlier as well uh, helping with uh, toileting needs if required assisting them to keep taking care of their oral health brushing teeth washing their face right it is uh, very much required next comes it is a part of personal hygiene in a way bathing and showering uh, assisting them with a shower or a bath if it's if the shower and bath is scheduled in the morning and ensuring that they are safe during the bath they are comfortable during the bath and offer support as and when required uh, breakfast preparation and eating assisting them in preparing breakfast considering their dietary preferences and medical suggestion or any nutritional requirements and helping them eat whenever they want to eat whenever the food is required ensuring that they are comfortable while eating uh, and the dining area the dining practice is absolutely safe the environment is very safe for them right next is medication administration as we discussed earlier administering the morning medication as prescribed by the doctor and taking follow up of that and providing them the correct dosage as per the schedule is very important. Uh, ensure that they take care of their medication, their food, their water intake which is required for the day. They consume everything in proportion and in right dose. Right? Next is dressing. It is very important to dress them appropriately and dress them according to the weather and if they have any plans for the day so dressing them according to that provide assistance in dressing if they require like we discussed earlier uh, zipping and unzipping maybe taking off the clothes or putting the clothes so it is required next is mobility and straight stretching uh, encourage light stretches or mobility exercise that is very beneficial for them it will uh, keep their muscles in, in flexibility and in the right condition assisting with getting out of the bed and moving around in the room or in the house if they cannot move out in parks or on the streets at least make sure that at least they they walk or they move in their room or in the house let's move forward uh, social interactions and engagement, uh, it is very important that we encourage conversation or engagement in various activities that they enjoy. It is very important for their mental stimulation and their social interaction. It is required for their mental and social well-being. So encourage them to move out, to meet friends, to meet people and interact and spend some time of the day with their friends and family. Uh, housekeeping and organizing uh, this is one of the important aspects uh, tidying up the bedroom or the living area where they are they are living or which is their room ensuring that everything is clutter free and safe for them and organize the belongings in a way that it's very handy for them and as they require things it should be arranged in a manner as per the requirement of the daily routine next is care plan review Review the days, care plan or schedule to ensure that are there any appointments or activities or special needs to be addressed for that day. It is important as well. So after discussing everything for which is required for elderly people, uh, it is of utmost importance that we take note of that, that in Indian context, it is very much important to understand that whosoever we are assisting, uh, if the person is male or female, the requirements may be different. The, the way we are handling them may be different. So considering that and asking for permission before assisting them is very important. If we take permission in prior, 
uh, this will ensure that they, they are uh, comfortable with the health and we will be protected from, from any challenges for the future. Right. So before taking care of any elderly person, just make sure that you understand that the males have different requirements and females have different requirements and taking permission and making them comfortable with the help is very important. Thank you.